good evening everyone so today is the eighth session of our lecture series and i would like to invite uh, civil engineering sectional committee chairman engineer mangala silva to do the webinar over to you sir uh, yes panduka thank you very much um dear participants uh, i am mangala silva chairperson of civil engineering sectional committee for this session in isl Actually, on behalf of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka, I would like to warmly welcome everyone to for today's um, lecture. Actually, we all know that today is the today topic. According to the topic that we published, it's about that uh, how to design the beams for direct shear. So, but I I I I know with our whole experience, we all know that I mean, um, generally, Professor Jai, when Professor Jai Singh is going to do a lecture, he is not only going to limit into that particular topic he's giving so many additional details i hope today also it will be the same and also at this at this point i would like to mention uh, and i'm really happy to appreciate professor jai singh's work for doing this particular lecture series free of charge um, i'm getting so many good comments for this uh, particular lecture series and also um, during last two weeks i received many comments saying that i mean there were so many students and so many uh, engineers propose some new topics that professor jai singh can do the lectures but we will we will concentrate on those things after doing this lecture series so with that introduction um, i would like to invite professor jai singh to do the lecture professor over to you thank you thank you mangala can you hear me yes sir yes sir we can hear ah, you and today we are going to start a new topic and last time i uh, talked briefly about torsion and shear but today we are not going to talk about torsion we are talking going to talk about direct shear because once you learn about direct shear it's so easy to uh, learn about learn the torsion and shear so uh, direct shear first question why do you get direct shear we have a member beam subjected to two loads w1 w2 we apply it here where are we resisting at support a b c and d that's where we are resisting so if you are applying a load here resisting here they should be shear call it shear so whether it's a udl yeah udl we should have we must have the bending moment diagram whenever there is bending what is the next thing that happens We love shear. As the shear force diagram goes like this, and we approximately say the shear here cannot exceed point six times F, where F is this F. F is equal to L times one point three five T K plus one point five. So the total load on a B. So it's so easy. You don't have any calculation. Calculate the total load on a B. If you have a building, I mean. A grid like this, and uh, these are one-way slabs. Where the load goes? If the load goes to this side, it's a plan. So these are columns. So you know the load. 
And if it's an office building, we say it's 12 meters squared. And if the span is 4 meters, then 12 into 4. So this will be subjected to 48 kilometers per meter. 48 multiplied by the spans are 7.0 meters. So straight away, we can see what's going on. So we'll have a beam subjected to a load of how much? 48 kilonewtons per meter. And what is the shear? Shear will be 0.6 times 48 multiplied by 7.1. Straight away, we know the shift. So in British court, the approach was simple. So today is uh, 24th, January 2024, Civil Engineering Sectional Committee, lecture number 7 or 8? Eight? 8, 8 sir. Lecture 8, and this is page 1. This is clear. Why is 0.6? It cannot exceed 0.6. So we know the maximum. We know the load, we know the maximum. But which here comes where? Comes at the support. Where the support can be a 500 by 500 column. This 500 by 500. So, in the British code, we are drawn like this. So, what is the value, Banduka? What is the value? 0.6 multiplied by 48 multiplied by 7? 201.6. 202. We say 202. So, we say this is 202. Again, we go like this. Then there are two important sections. Let's say we are using uh, 600 by 400 B. So there are two important sections. One is the face of the sun. Other one is D, simple D, away from the face of the support. So 545 millimeters away from the face of the sun. So if I do an exaggerated diagram, you know, you know, large diagram, large diagram. So this is 250. This is 540. Because here the D is 540. You know the reason. The cover is 35. So we have this. So this is the face of the support. This D away from the sun. Face of the sun. Why are they two so important? The reason is if you draw, take a section of a beam simply supported. This is the bending moment diagram. This is the shear force diagram. When the bending moment is zero, shear force is maximum. So if you take an element here, what do you get? Only the shear. Supplementary shear. Stress, sigma zero. So you can draw a more circle. Zero. Tau, minus tau, zero tau. And you find the principal stresses are like this. Tension, compression. So what is the failure? Type, it's here. What is the VM failure? A crack like this. Where the tension is pulling it 
this tension is pulling it that so shear failure is a tensile failure shear failure is a tensile failure because this maximum stress that you get in the mass circle will cause the shear failure and it's a tensile failure so it's tension so how to prevent this links like this so tension is taken by whom now tension is taken by the links so we try links and shear failure can be prevented so shear failure is a tensile failure and shear failure means we have to prevent it by using vertical reinforcement vertical reinforcement should be properly anchored so what we say is vertical reinforcement should be in the form of links like this vertical reinforcement should be links close links or this shape but we can have a closure this is also possible this is also possible this is also possible But this is called a torsional link. These are called shear links. What is not possible? This is not wrong. This is possible. But the new link bending machines, they give you this. So you can buy this, but ask a man to bend like this and make it like that. And I generally keep this length as 10 times diameter of the link. Because I would like to link it. So generally what you need is 6 times diameter. Generally I keep about 10 times that. And bend. Is that clear? Bandhuka? Yes, clear, sir. It's clear. Thank you. Right. So that is shear. And we know the magnitude. And we can have two types of shear. One is you have a beam, no reinforcement, just these bars, no links, then who will carry tension? Concrete has to carry tension. What, how do you write concrete? Strong in tension or weak in tension? Very weak in tension. So, all these capacities will depend on the double action provided by these reinforcements. So, it's a function of 100 S over Vt. The double action, more reinforcement, bigger the shear strength. And then, what else? Grade of concrete. Grade of concrete and then the tensile strength. Generally, this value is between 0 0.4, 0 0.7 megapascal. So, bigger the section, this side, big section, small section. This side. Because the depth close to 0.4. So for most of my calculations, I don't bother to check the value. I simply use it as point. Because the variation is so small to get any advantage, so I just use the value of 0 0.4, 0 0.45. Not more than that. Most of the time you check the code and finally you find 0.4 to 0.45 is the value that you get after calculation. So I just generally use 0.4. Right. So you have this situation. And that is, then you can see we have links properly reinforced. Links. What else? We can have this carrying compression. 
this current tension this current tension who is by the equilibrium current compression who is carry the compression compression will be like this carried by whom concrete but concrete is a very strong material but it is not super strong so there is a maximum value stress in compression lead into failure of concrete it's a maximum value it's about 4.8 megapascal in bsa concrete maximum is about 4.8 megapascal why we use 20 25 30 megapascal cube strength of and the maximum stress that we can allow in compression induced by shear is only about 2 because if you use uh, about 5 25 into something like 0.25 comes to about uh, 6.25 So with all these additional factors of safety, we say, okay, we can allow a maximum value of four point eight, because when you use twenty five cube strength, the actual strength is twenty twenty one divided by point two five is five. So you can see uh, generally the values vary between four point eight to five point. So it's a very small variation. So generally, I I I keep I have a rule. Maximum shear capacity is five. In fact, if the maximum shear capacity is five, minimum is point four. What shall I do? I generally select the section. Shear maximum shear at the support. So here is two one and two. Is that right, Bhagwan? Two one and two. Yes, sir. Two one and two. Okay. Now I have to draw a diagram. So this seven thousand center to center. Face of the support six thousand. So I have to say. Three thousand two hundred fifty multiplied by three thousand five hundred multiplied by two one and two. What is the value of one hundred eighty? What is the value? One hundred eighty-seven point five. One hundred eighty. Now what do I do? 188 simple V is equal to 188 multiplied by 10 to power 3 divided by with 400. Let's calculate by uh, start with 600 by 400 section. Yes, 600, 600 by 400. Yes, 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 600 by
failing crushing of concrete. So, stress is 0.87. What is the maximum? 5. Can it fail? By crushing of concrete? No, it cannot fail by crushing of concrete. Why? Maximum is around 5. But at the phase of the support, maximum shear is 0.87. Can it ever fail? By crushing of concrete? Never. Now we come to the next phase. Now for this, I'll say the, uh, the, the effective rate is 550. So here we have 250, rather 550. So that gives uh, 800. Then I'll say B is equal to 100, 202 multiplied by uh, 2700 or 3500 minus 800 divided by 3000. What is the value of one degree? One hundred and fifty-five point eight two. Fifty-six. So yes. simple V is equal to hundred fifty-six into ten to the power three divided by four hundred divided by five hundred twenty. Point seven one five. So then we look at the BS formula it says ASV or SV so B V minus V C point eight seven yeah very simple okay very simple now what would I do now you can see here we have a term called V minus VC. Now if V is 0.45, VC is also 0.5, what do you get? Zero. Then you get infinity. That is not good. You can't get infinity for the link space. Because uh, this is zero, it goes there, you get SC as infinity. Can't be. So then it says, V minus VC should be greater than 0.4. V minus VC should be greater than 0. So, anything less? If V minus VC is less than 0. 0.4, we say AC or SV is equal to B 0. 0.4 divided by 0. 0.87. And we call this spacing. SV is equal to ASV 0.87 FYV or 0.4 times V. And in this equation, ASV means if you are using 8 millimeter bars, 50 here, 50 here, ASV means 50, 100 millimeter square. Got it? Yes, sir. The AC is known, SV is equal to 100.87 into 500 divided by 0 0.4 multiplied by breadth. Point. What is the answer? 271.87. 271.8. And if you are using uh, 20 millimeter bars here, you know what allow you to use 20 times 20, 400 millimeters. But you can't go for 400. So you might select 275 or 250 for the links. I would say 250. Why? Because I would like to have a little extra reinforcement uh, to assure that you know overloading can be tolerated easily. Why? 
I like a failure in flexion. I don't like a failure in shear. What is the reason? If a beam fails in flexion, what can you do? You can bring a steel plate and well, you know, fix the steel plate at the bottom of the beam. Now the beam will be okay after jacking the beam. On the other hand, after jacking the beam, you will you'll use the FRB trim. Fiber reinforced polymers, carbon fibers. What will happen? Beam will be okay. But if there's a shear failure with diagonal attacks, very difficult to repair. So because of that reason, I don't mind being little generous with shear links close to the sub, not elsewhere. What is it? Yes, that is clear. Sir. Right. Now, let's assume that uh, this uh, load is double. Now we got a load of 2 and 2. It was double. Which means, instead of uh, what is the value? We got 156. Instead of 150, see how you get 312. Now let's assume that you know beam has been overloaded by somebody. And we are getting a load of 312. Now what is V? 312 into the about 3. Divided by breadth, 400. Divided by depth, 700. Uh, 545. And you got... Uh, the answer will be... Uh, point... One point four two. Is that right, Bhagavad? Yes, sir. 1.4. Now we have to substitute. Why? In the first equation, A C over S V is equal to B V minus V C over 0.87 F I V. And uh, now A C is 100. S V breadth 400. V minus VC. So this is 1.42 minus 0.4. is a large V. What is SC? Banduka? 106.61. So, which means uh, better to use 10 millimeter H strain bars and H2 for H strain, the spacing will be a 61 into 50, 78.5. For H strain bars, the spacing will be more. So, how much you get? 150? 167.3 100, So what are you going to do? You are going to do this. You are going to calculate Simple V as 0.4. Capital V is equal to 0.4 multiplied by how much? 400 multiplied by 540. What is the value of V? So this is what the nominal reinforcement can carry. How much is it? 0.4 into 400 multiplied by 545 into regular power minus 3. 
Yeah. How much? Eighty seven point two. Eighty. Seven point two. Now you can see I'm uh, I have double the nodes. So the center is four hundred four goes down like this. And here at the face, you I got hundred and eighty something. Hundred and eighty face of the support we got uh, Base of the support, we got 188, but it will be 366, 376, and then there will be another section where it's 87.2. So, what are you going to write here? H A H 10 at 100. Here, H8 at 250. So you can decide where you are going to write nominal links, where you are going to write design links. So here, design. Here, nominal. Is that clear, Mandukun? Yes, clear, sir. When the shear force is low, we can go for nominal links. When the shear force is high, we must design the links. So in BS8110 method, we say we are using a truss analogy. Truss analogy. What is a truss? Beam is like a truss. So what is the purpose of this? Compression. Along with concrete. What is the purpose of this? Tension. Like a truss. But truss cannot be like this. You need diagonal members. So what are the diagonal members? Compression. Concrete. So in red was concrete. The diagonal members are out of concrete. Is that clear one? Yes, clear, sir. And in BS810, this angle is 45 degrees. And that's the place where the Euro coordinate is. Okay, so this is what the BS is. Now let's look at what the Euro codes is. The equation for Euro code is given in, I'm going to share. So under six, so it has a lot of things. And under six. So this is all about uh, the column design. And then we come to six.
is all about columns. Because see, you know, it doesn't. It, it's written well written, but you know, doesn't look very friendly. So it is all about precious stuff. So now we come to the design. Under section 6, bending with or without axial force. The assumptions are plain, sections remain plain. The strain in bonded reinforcement or bonded precepts and the weather intention or compression is the same. Tensile strength of concrete is ignored. In concrete in compression, are derived from stress chain relationship. The concrete strain in concrete shall be limited to E C U T was three three depending on the stress strain diagram. Talking about stresses. This is a stress strain curve for concrete. Can you see epsilon C2 and epsilon C3? The Cu3, epsilon C2 and epsilon Cu2. Those values are given in which code? Which table? Here, you can see. Those values are given in this table. Is that clear one, Luka? Yeah, yes, sir. That is clear. Yeah. So we'll uh, look at code again. And then it says shear. Flexure is very simple. But uh, it doesn't give equations so for, for flexure. We have derived equations. That's what we did uh, last time, uh, you know, when I said uh, no need for equations, the shortcut methods are available. Also available. Then this talks a big about VRDC, the design shear resistance of a member without shear enforcement. That is based on 0.4, 0.45 value. VRDC is the design value of shear force which can be sustained by yielding shear enforcement. That means we are DS is with shear reinforcement. We are the max is, can you remember? I told you 5, 4.8, 5 range. We are the max yes. is 4.5 to 5 range. This, what you get with when you have reinforcement. And this inclined portion is for pre stress concrete, so you don't have to worry. This V, C, C, D, and V, T, D are pre stress concrete. So you don't have to worry. Because we are dealing with RC design. So RC design, the shear member shear reinforcement is equal to VRD is equal to VRDS. And if the regions VRDC, what is VRDC? That is the shear resistance of a member without shear reinforcement. Can you remember? I just calculated uh, the nominal links, nominal link area, calculated some yes. 87. More force, yes. So that is that refers to nominal nominal link area. So VRDC is for nominal link. VRDC is for nominal links. And then it says uh, when the when no shear enforcement is needed, still you have to provide the minimum shear. That is given in section 9. All the minimum values are given in section 9. In regions where VED, VED, what is VED? The actual actual shear force. Actual shear force, the design force, the design shear force is more than the one that can carry without links. Then you must provide shear links. It's the same, same thing. And to calculate VRDC, it gives the equation. 
use an equation with a minimum value. And there are big equations, but uh, what is the value you get finally? 0.4 times or 0.45 times the cross section. All these are big calculations, but what is the final answer? Around 0.4. Around 0.45. But the important thing is if you have pre-stressed, then you can get a high value. So this equation, this is the pre-stressed part, this is the RC part. So RC part comes first, pre-stressed concrete part comes next. Is that clear, Mandugu? Yes. But I whatever see. you do, what is the answer? Yeah. Point 0.4. Around point 0.4, yeah. Around point 0.4. So you can do any calculation, but the answer is around point 0.4. That's how you create the rules. The moment you do that, your calculations become very, very, very simple. Why? You know there is a big equation given, but the answer is around point 0.4. Then there are so many things. This is a pre-stress rule, so we ignore it. So then there are other parameters and doing all the kind of complicated things. Finally, it says, if you have, if you have, if you want reinforcement, the reinforcement requirement is given by VRDS with shearings. S W or S that is S V Z F Y W B what theta where theta is twenty two degrees with theta is twenty two degrees what theta can you see this equation this equation. Cot 22 is equal to 1 over tan 22. What is the value of 1 over tan 22? One over tan 22. 2.47. So generally it's called 2.5. So we are D. S is equal to ASW. <coughs> ASW. So, shall we use the value that we got? Uh, what is the value that we used in the last example? Uh, we used uh, VS 312. So, let's say this 312. 10 to the power 3. AW is uh, 78.5 into 2. 156. SV. We don't know. We want, we like to find it. Is it 0.9 times D? If you see, is it in any equation? Is that means lever arm? Lever arm is considered as 0.9 for here calculations. Multiplied by Divided by
multiplied by 0.87, multiplied by 500, multiplied by 2.5. But the what is SC value? These are 157 multiplied by 0.9, multiplied by 545, multiplied by 0.87, multiplied by 500, multiplied by 2.5. Divided by 3312 into 10 to the power of 3. What is SC? 268.41. Can you remember British court gave a higher value? A lower value? Yes. British court gave uh, 150, 167. This gives slightly higher. So, Eurobot is more advanced in sheer design. But in Eurocode also, we have only one equation. And that equation is given in the code. Then you got to ask, what is this theta? What is this magic theta? How you get theta? That's where the complication. Otherwise, finally share enforcement. According to Eurocode, how many equations? One equation. Straight away you can find it. And that equation you share. Equation six eight. One equation. Only one equation. Very easy. So many people say, oh, shear design is a nightmare. No, it's not a nightmare. Then, what is the speciality? What is this theta? That's where the complication comes. It says, when the concrete fails in crushing, when the concrete fails in crushing, at the face of the support, theta can be less than 22 degrees, or theta can be between 22 and what it says is check and see whether theta is less than 22 or theta is between this. How do you achieve that? How do you do this check? For that, we look at the phone. This says VRD max is given by some equation, equation 6.9, and it's a big equation. Alpha CW, BW, Z, new one, FCD, divided by cot theta plus tan theta. Big equation. The big equation. So, how are we going to deal with it? First, assume theta is 22. Substitute in this one. And alpha CD, alpha CW, is equal to 1 for non pre stress concrete structure. Alpha CW is 1. Okay, good news. Alpha CW is 1. BW, we know 1. Is it 0.9D? New one? For new one, there's an equation. New one. What is new? New is 0.6 times 1 minus FCK 
divided by this is new. Okay, we know new. The strength reduction factor for concrete factor is here given by this equation, the equation I have shown. FCD is FCK divided by gamma M or FCK divided by 1 by 5. So now you can see the whole equation is here. The values are here. What shall we do? Substitute. We are the max. With angle as 22, 1 by naught into 400. Into 0.9b. 545. Multiplied by new one. So that is, uh, we are using uh, 30 megapascal concrete. So this comes to about uh, 0.53. This 30 divided by 250. So it uh, comes to about 0 0.88 multiplied by 0 0.6, about 0.53. And 1 over 10, 22 plus 10, 22. 1 over 10, 22 is about 2.5, 2.47. 10, 22 comes to about 0.4. Okay. So what is the VRD maximum? Panduka? What is the VRD max? Do, multiplied by 10 to the power minus 10 to minus 3. Yeah. yeah. So what is the value? 36.117. Can't be. Oh. It has to be more. It has Pardon. to be something like uh, 405. It's a big value. What is the value of the I'm getting the same value. Huh? Is it uh, one into uh, four hundred? So one by naught multiplied by four hundred multiplied by point nine into five hundred forty five yes. multiplied by uh, so this should be point five three is that right I mean around point five three point five three yes, yes. Maybe one minus it's about point six multiplied by point nine uh, what is that ten twenty two is two point one or ten value is is uh, this way. This whole value is two point four seven. One or ten twenty two is uh, two point four seven. Plus ten twenty two point four. That is uh, two point eight seven. So I think you missed yes. FCD. Huh? Yeah. You missed FCD, sir. FCD. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the reason. Oh, yes, yes. You multiplied by uh, 30 divided by 1.5. 30 divided by 1.5. Oh, multiply the whole thing by, you know, FCK divided by 1.5. It's missing. Now, what is the answer? 700. You uh, 30 divided by 1.5. I'm sure you are getting 450 or something. Or 600? 722, I would say. Okay, good. That's the correct answer. 
Now, all two are split by calculation. 722. Trade to power 3 divided by 400 divided by 545. What is the answer? Cross to 5. 3.31. 3.3. Can you remember the magic number 5? 4.8 and 5? So what it says is, if the shear stress is 3.31, angle is 22. If the if it is close to 5, 3.31. If it is close to 5, what is the angle? 42. So how can I avoid all these extra calculations of finding the angle of shear failure? What I do is, I make sure the maximum shear is less than 2.3. So how can I how can I control the maximum shear? Yes. Because I am the guy who selects the width of the beam. So, so if the shear stress is too high, I increase the width of the beam. And I keep the maximum shear less than 2.5. So do I do worry about the angle then? Angle is always 22. Got the point? Now if the angle is more than 22, then this that means if the shear is more than it's around 900, 850 or 900, what will happen? Angle will be more than 22. So I am moving because it can vary between 3.31 and around 5. The shear, shear stress maximum can vary between 3.31 and 5. So what shall I do? What I do is I will calculate, I will keep the shear stress, maximum shear stress less than 2.5. Then what will happen? I don't have to do any calculation because the angle is 22 anyway. What the point, Bandhuri? Yes, yes, sir. Because you know, yes, if the shear is high, I have to find the angle. Why should I bother to find the angle? Because I have, I am in control. I am the guy who selects the width of the beam. So I select a bigger width. And keep the shear stress down. Can you understand it? Yes, sir. So when I'm so when I'm selecting the general arrangement drawing, how could I do that? I have a building. Heavily loaded. Say we said 1.35 dk plus 1.6 uk is around 20. A warehouse. And these uh, beams are also, let's say, one way, 8 meters long. And uh, so these are about 5 meters, uh, 4 meters. These are 9 meter spans. 4 meters, heavy loaded, 20 to 4, 80, 18 to 9, 0. 0.6 times 18 to, point, 18 to 9, 9, what is the value? Big shear. Four hundred and thirty-two. Still it's less than 17 feet. Still, it is less than 722. Will I have a problem? Less than 722. Will I have a problem? No, I don't have a problem. Why? Because you can see, most of the, 99% of the cases, what is the angle theta? Less than 22 degrees, so it is 22 degrees. Got it? Yes. Now I have, I have shown a very long beam, 9 meters long, heavily loaded, 20 kilometers per meter square. So each beam will carry 80 kilometers per meter. Still, it's not possible to reach this uh, around 3.3 value. So shear capacity is 722. 
So there's no way you can come there. So in Eurocode, don't worry. What is the way? Select a width so that shear stress at the face of the support. is less than 2.5. Mega press. When you do that, theta is 20. Is that clear for you? Yes, sir. That is clear. You are the person who, who select the, who, who draws the general in. Architect mm -hmm. or the engineer. Engineer draws. So engineer can do a simple calculation and make sure the shear strength remains less than 2.5. So you angle is 20 and you don't have to do any complicated calculation. In textbooks, shear is a big mess, huge calculations. But we don't have to do it. Why? Because you, we, we, we go around it and we make sure shear is the value that I want, not the code wants. Code is, has covered all the possible scenarios. That doesn't mean I have to calculate all the possible scenarios. I'm the design engineer. I decide what I'm going to do. So I decide I'm going to select a width large enough so that the maximum shear stress at the face of the support will be less than 2.5. Definitely the angle will be 22. What's the method? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You can understand, huh? Yes. How about the others? We have over 90. So, how about the others? So, if you look at Mosley and Manji, any book, even the design example I have, I have uh, given. Because I have to cover all the possible scenarios. So, the design example. No, even in the design example, I have covered it in great detail, considering all different scenarios. And uh, so you can see a lot of big equations. But don't worry. So I have given a complete example. And with the flexural part of the example, Then this is a shear part of the example. And so at each support, the calculations are given. Then these equations are given. The minimum ratio equation is given. Yeah, in under section 9. Big calculations. But Then I'll uh, also look at uh, the simplified. Okay, so I will show you how we deal with it. I'll share the screen. If you look at this knot, yes, so you can see. You you have you have this knot. I think you have shared it, sir, uh, this one. See here. So, all those values are available as tables. So, we don't have to actually calculate. Ultimate shear stress. So, I, I told you it varies between 0 0.4 0 0.4 range. But, we uh, have shared uh, these notes. Yeah, these values are there. So, likewise, you know, the the simplified formula available. So, so you know, in the, what is the difference between Euro and BS? BS code gives this table in the code. Euro code gives one equation. It says if you want, you can. So that's why you know, the advantage is, you know, you can make use of these simplified tools as well. So, Vanduka, I mean, any questions on this?
there was one question yeah, that is uh, yeah um, can we enhance the shear capacity if we can provide proper anchorage to longitudinal reinforcement no, no actually that's something different uh, it's, it, it comes slightly different way i'll share the screen i'll show you Here you can see something. The additional tensile force, delta FTD, in the longitudinal reinforcement, due to shear, VED, may be calculated from this. Again, uh, for theta, theta is 25 degrees. So 22, 22 degrees. And uh, it's given as 0.5 VED for theta. What does it mean? That means you must uh, provide some uh, longitudinal reinforcement to provide the equilibrium. So don't get a lot of reinforcement in uh, when you are doing the shear design. According to Eurocode, uh, you have to be little careful when you are cur curtailing the reinforcement. So uh, generally, uh, when you are curtailing, you will make sure that the in the early days, we used to have the hanger bars as the smaller reinforcement and additional reinforcement used to come uh, in the middle. But uh, that is not the practice that we do now. Now we have the we run the larger bars as hanger bars, and then we provide smaller bars as additional. Bars. Why? If you have the smaller bars as hanger bars, you can't satisfy this condition. So, to satisfy this condition, you have to put the larger bars as hanger bars, the, the outer bars, the inner bars can be discontinued. Have you got the point, Bangabe? Yes, sir. Very straight. Yeah, right. So, so, you have to be very careful in uh, design, shear design. When you are curtailing, especially in Eurocode, the curtailing methods are very different. So, you have to curtail uh, the smaller bars, not the big bars. Big bars must be running, otherwise, you can't provide this uh, shear capacity. Equilibrium. Equilibrium cannot be provided easily. Got it? Yes. And then, uh, when you go to section 9, it says uh, the minimum reinforcement. Section 9. Section 9 is all about minimum reinforcement. Here you get it. Here you get it. The reinforcement ratio for shear is given by this alpha is 90, sine alpha is 1, and then say, say, the minimum ratio is given by this one. So there's a minimum longitudinal reinforcement. Sorry, the minimum shear length. There's a minimum. It's a minimum. Okay. Right. So Panduka, now I have given a design example. So uh, design example is very complicated. Mm -hmm. If you are interested, you can have a look, but uh, this is all this is the, this is the crux of the method. So, oh, but yes. uh, if you are for completion, I have given one example yes, in the model. And you can see the, all the calculations very clearly given in the example. But there's a small mistake in the example. In this formula, uh, there should be a value of D. D is missing. The depth should be 600 and 545. You have to multiply it by 545. But here, I have not multiplied it. So there's a small mistake here. Other than that, uh, this knot is perfect. There's a small mistake there. So if, so if you go through this example, you can learn a lot. Go through this okay. example. You can learn a lot. Take your time. Go through it. But be aware. That there's a small mistake here because I have forgotten to multiply it by D. 
the equation has d the effective depth but i have forgotten to multiply it by d so uh, just be aware of that other than that it's perfectly done all the examples everything is there but uh, the method that i have taught to is far easier than the method given the reason is uh, you know uh, the code uh, the the code basic books like mostly and bandi they are trying to cover everything but i have shown you how to avoid all the trouble what is the trick when you are selecting the width of the beam we will make sure the maximum shear stress is around 2.5 or less then angle is 22 whatever we like whatever we try to do angle will be fixed but if the shear is high the angle can vary between 22 to 40 that is a unlikely case because you know when you am designing i don't i don't like shear to govern why shear value does not give enough warning how about structural value it gives in warning so i like beam to fail in fraction not not in shear so i make sure shear capacity is excessive Flexural capacity is sufficient. How how could I make the shear capacity excessive? I I use a wider beam, not a very narrow beam. Very narrow beam shear capacity is low. Wider beam shear capacity is high. If the beam is heavily loaded, I will use a wider beam. If the beam is very lightly loaded, then the shear is not critical anyway. Have you got the point, Bangalore? Yes, sir. That is clear. So there's a very well done example in the notes. So please go through it. And if you are, if you want more information, go through the examples given in Musi and Bandi. And then there's another set of notes, foundation notes. They also, you, I have done. Uh, I have this uh, note on foundations. In the uh, in order T type foundation design, you can find all these calculations again. So there are so many design examples around. You can make use of it. Anyway, when I cover the foundation designs, I will show you how to use it. The same equations will be used over and over and over again. But you can see for flexure, I have given a simplified method, or you can use the equations. For shear, I have again given a very simplified method. So that you can use one equation, forgetting about all the complications that are being created by you, and still our designs will be optimum because I don't like shear governed designs. I like always flexure governed designs. So, Bandhuka. Uh, so there is a uh, question. Yeah. Um, how how we can apply retrofitting methods to shear failures? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so I don't. I mean, if a beam has failing shear, you better check why it failing shear because generally shear failures don't happen, right? Now, if you have seen a shear failure in a structure, be very careful because something really wrong with the design. That's how I put it. So if the design engineer has been vigilant, there cannot be shear failures in structures. And retrofitting, what is the method? Very simple. You have a column. You have the shear failure. You fix a steel bracket here using uh, pre-stressing. Uh, Type uh, bore rods, fix it, support it here. Now where the shear failure occurs, D away. By the time that you come to that place, the shear capacity, shear stress will be much less. Could you understand the method, Bali? Yes, yes, sir. It is very clear. Very simple because all the shear occur, shear failure occurs, D away from the surface of the support. So you remove you you change the face of the sun by having a steam record. 
Got it? Got it, got it, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And yes, and one more we question. We have because CFA is design engineer would be a you know nutty case. Yes, if the design engineer is a good design engineer, he will never allow a CFA to happen. He will always make sure CFA which is sufficient and CFA is never never happen. The links are all there, so they are cheap. But uh, you need to make sure if the, if the beam ever fails, it will fail in the middle due to flexural overstretching. Okay. Okay, sir. And uh, one last question. Yeah. Uh, some member, uh, one member has put one sketch into the chat box. Uh, if you can see it, sir, oh, he's yeah. asking about uh, sh shear link shape, uh, which is in Indian standards. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is wrong. This is wrong. You have to have a hook. This is wrong. This is the correct one. No? You put this one, put a bar, put a bar there, then you use a cross. So this is a standard link. Where these bars are properly, and you don't have to link across everyone. After about three or four, you can cross. Like what is drawn is a wrong plan. You can't have shear links like that. That's also in questions in the chat box. Yeah. If you have, uh, you okay, sir, okay. And so I here is very simple, but uh, yes, on the code, it's very, very complicated. So don't uh, yes. fall into that trap. Don't never think that she has difficult. She is easy. But you have to avoid all the unnecessary calculations that are given, which are not, uh, I don't encourage people to design uh, Shear Gavan designs should always be flexure Gavan designs. So, with shear, we will be generous. And we can easily be generous. Even locally, we can make the beam wider. Right? Okay. So, don't uh, go for shear Gavan designs, always go for flexure Gavan designs. Okay? Okay, sir. And how about sir, our next session? Uh, it is a continuation of our. Yes, sir. Uh, the next day, uh, now, now shear is covered. Bending and shear, and then uh, we need to look at uh, columns, and also we need to look at what are the things. Uh, shear is there, uh, torsional shear. Then shall we cover the torsional shear also in the same uh, time? Okay, okay. Sir. Then, then it's good because then, then shear is completely over. So next time we'll uh, talk about torsional shear. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, Engineer Nalakos Enavidapne to do the work of uh, Thank you, Engineer Banduka, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Tisan Singer for conducting this lecture series to uplift the knowledge of civil engineers as well as civil engineering students. Uh, thank you once again, sir, for your knowledge sharing. And also, I would like to thank the chairman of Civil Engineering Sectional Committee, Engineer Mangala Silva, uh, for initiating this kind of lecture series. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, also, I would like to thank ISL Secretariat, IT Department, and the Publicity Department for hosting facilities for this lecture series. Finally, uh, for all the participants, uh, your interests and active participations make this lecture series success. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.